there and welcome to Noe. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick demo on how you build dashboards off of a MySQL database uh, using Noe. Um, so obviously we have uh, visualizations. Uh, here's an example of uh, a few of the visualizations we can support. So we can support anything from uh, geomapping, geoclustering, geospatial uh, to your standard uh, bar charts, area charts, uh, pivot tables, uh, and the like. We can also support drill downs as well. Um, so if you want to drill down into data, um, you can do that. Um, and uh, we'll, we have uh, the ability to do some ad hoc reporting as well, which I'll show you a little bit later in the demo. Um, so as I said, we're going to connect to a MySQL database. So I'm just going to go over to our database uh, data sources area, and I'm going to connect to a new data source. Um, so just to give you an idea of the different types of data sources that we support, so uh, obviously we support your, your traditional relational uh, databases as well as uh, the more common uh, data warehouses. Um, but we also have native integration to NoSQL databases. So if you have semi-structured or unstructured data sources, uh, we can get at those natively. And what that means is we don't uh, install any drivers. We don't move the data. Uh, out of those databases, we connect natively to them uh, and then query them in their native uh, query language. Uh, and we can actually blend data across these NoSQL sources to any of these relational sources as well. Um, and then lastly, we have a handy REST API uh, integration as well. So if you have data that's sitting uh, in, a, in a database or in a cloud service uh, that you want to bring in for analytics and there's a REST API on top, we can get at that. Uh, through this connector. Uh, but as I mentioned today, we are going to be focused on uh, MySQL. So I'm just going to set up a new connection to uh, my MySQL database. So we'll just give it a name. Um, I'm just telling it where the database is located. So this could be uh, in the cloud. It could be on-prem. Uh, we don't we don't much care. You just need to tell us where it is um, and then how we can access it. Uh, so this is our cloud uh, service. Um, so we, the simplest way is you simply is you whitelist our IPs, and then that will uh, usually give us access to uh, to where your database is. Um, we do have some additional uh, security measures if uh, if we need to implement them. Uh, and then lastly, we have a full on-prem uh, offering as well if cloud is not acceptable in your particular environment. Uh, so I've done that. I'm just going to save this here, and then I'm ready to start to uh, build my queries. So this is our query interface. This is designed primarily for sort of a data engineer type of user, somebody who's, who's technical, um, understands where the data is located, understands the relationship between the data, um, and you know is going to be building what we are what we call a virtual data set. Uh, so what we've done is we've connected to the MySQL database here, and what we uh, will present to the user is uh, a list of the tables that are available to query. Um, so I can pick my table here, so I'm just going to pick this uh, demo uh, data set table, and as you can see, we start to auto-generate uh, the SQL uh, query. So if you know SQL, you could just go over here and type your SQL statements away. Um, if you rather have a more sort of point and click interface, we have that as well. So if you look at this metrics uh, field here, it'll give you all of the data that is available, all of data elements that are available in this particular table. So I'm going to pick a few uh, uh, fields here um, that I want to add to my uh, query. And, um, and sent. Uh, and uh, oops, oops, and message type. Okay, so I have my basic uh, query written here. Uh, if I hit this preview button, what it's going to do is push down that query. Uh, run, it's going to run on my MySQL server, uh, and what's come back here are the results of that query. So with Noe, which is a little bit different than some of the other um, SQL-based uh, query tools that you might be used to, we don't, um, you don't have to move any of your data into our platform uh, before you can start querying it. We, we push the queries down and they are run on your server and the results come back and that's, those are res the results that we work with. 
Um, so if you're dealing with a lot of data, uh, a big data environment, uh, it's a much more efficient way because you don't have to you know, move all of that data out of your existing servers and into our environment. Uh, and then nothing is loaded into memory. So you don't have that issue where you're waiting for the queries to run before the results are actually uh, visualized. So I have my uh, data set here. So maybe, maybe I want to do some things to this data. So I have a date field here, um, but I really don't want the actual date. I just want to know what the, the month of the, of the date that these messages were, were sent. Um, so we have a, a proprietary uh, language called Cloud9QL, which you can think of as almost, uh, it provides a lot of the data prep functions that you uh, might need to do. So to give you an idea of some of the functions that we have built into the platform, uh, there's a list here of all of these, all the different types of functions. Um, so you can do aggregations, you can uh, change the format of fields, you can do min max, that type of thing. So I'm gonna create a new field that's the, the month that these messages were sent. And I'm gonna use the month function on that date field to just extract the month uh, and then create a new field. So now I have this new field called month sent, um, which is great. Uh, but maybe I want to create, derive a whole new field entirely. So I have uh, the number of clicks and the number of sent messages. So um, since I'm doing sort of an email marketing uh, analytics exercise here, I want to grab the click-through rate. So what was the click-through rate of these particular uh, messages? So if I create a new field called click-through rate, it's the clicks divided by sent. Uh, and now I've derived an entirely new field. And what what we do is we will uh, run the query, we'll bring back the results, and then we will apply any kind of cloud line uh, functions that you have uh, attached to this particular data set. So, the, so these fields will always be derived um, when this query runs. So this is looking pretty good, uh, but I have uh, additional data about the customer that I want to bring in that's in my customer table. So I'm going to join another SQL table to this query. So I'm just going to go grab my database again and I'm going to run, I'm going to create another query which is on the customer table. And I'm just going to grab a couple of fields here, maybe uh, the state field. Um, so you can see here is my first query, uh, which was grabbing the campaign, the marketing campaign information. Here's my second query that's grabbing the customer information. And the only thing I need to do now is, is, is uh, tell, tell us how to join. Uh, th these two uh, queries together. So I'm just going to do a simple inner join, and in this case, uh, customer customer is my key field, and I'm just going to hit save there. And then if I hit preview again, uh, what's happening is these queries are getting federated out. So both queries are running simultaneously uh, on your server, and then the results are coming back. We're doing the join. We're applying all of the aggregations that you may have applied, and now we're presenting you with this sort of finished uh, virtual data set. So you can now see I have my state field here uh, attached to my customer. So this is looking pretty good. So the next thing I can think of is how do I want this to run? Do I want it to run in real time, or do I want it to, uh, or is real time sort of overkill for this particular report? So I have a couple of options here on how I want to sort of do my warehousing strategy. So if I click this box here, direct query, that means that it's going to be a real-time query. So every time the user renders the dashboard that has this query behind it, uh, the query will automatically run and the user will be presented to up to, with up to the moment uh, information. If that's not necessary, I could put it on a schedule and maybe have it run every five minutes. Uh, and then it will run essentially in the background. And then when the user comes, instead of, uh, instead of going directly against the database, what it's going to do is this data will then be cached in our own uh, persistence layer. Uh, and then the, the dashboards will actually hit against that persistence layer, not directly against your database. So the user will always experience a very high performance uh, rendering of their dashboards. Your backend systems are uh, protected from uh, uh, heavy query load, uh, especially if there's a lot of data coming back. Uh, so it's sort of a win-win for, for both sides. If you do uh, need to do it in, in real time, you can have this be a minute uh, or you just correct, 
click this box and it'd be a direct query. And at that point, it'll uh, the query will run and then the results will be presented once that query has finished running. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to have that just run every five minutes or so. And if I hit this uh, save and run now button, it's going to... Uh, run that query. So I have my email marketing report running here. So it's all ready to go. And I'm ready now to uh, create a dashboard. So if I uh, go back to my select dashboard and I click on the create button here, I'm going to create a new uh, dashboard um, called uh, email marketing uh, report. Hit OK. Okay, so I have my dashboard created, so I'm just going to drag uh, the data set that we just created onto my dashboard. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into analyze mode here, and I can kind of see the data set that, that uh, is now available for analysts, business users to, uh, to work with. So you can see that it has the field that we created, month sent, it has our click-through rate that we created, uh, it has the state field that we brought in from that other uh, MySQL table um, and now is, you know, ready for the business, uh, the business side of the uh, team to, to start uh, slicing, dicing it any way they want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, clone this to a new widget because I want to uh, create an additional chart off of uh, this original data set. So uh, we're going to make it... Uh, um, customer sent. Um, so if I clone that and then add that widget to my dashboard, this is how I start to build new uh, uh, new charts off of the original data set. Um, so I'm going to go in here and go back into analyze mode and I'm going to start to slice and dice this data. So maybe I want to group it by a customer and then I want to note by uh, the month sent, and then I want to know the num the sum of the messages that were sent for that particular month. So uh, um, pretty easy to do the drag and drop uh, method. I can also um, use our new natural language processing that we've just added to do the same thing. Um, so maybe I just I so that I just type in um, what I want to see. So I want to see. Some are sent by a customer by a month sent, so it's already suggested that for me. So I'm just going to click on that, and it does exactly the same thing as I did with the drag and drop, but I have literally just typed in an English sentence and gotten that result. So uh, we, as I said, we just launched uh, the natural language uh, BI piece, uh, so we'll be adding a lot more to this over the next uh, few months, um, where you know it'll basically be up on the dashboard. Uh, users can type in their question and then it will dynamically generate the charts for them. Uh, so speaking of a chart, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, the chart billing side of it. Um, so you can see we have over 30 different types of charts, um, anything from you know, your standard bar charts to marketing charts, summary charts, uh, geospatial, that type of thing. Um, so for this particular data set, I'm just going to pick a relatively straightforward stacked uh, bar chart. So it's created a uh, my nice little chart here for me. Uh, and if I just hit uh, save and then uh, close this out, uh, I will now have my uh, new widget. And I just basically keep doing that uh, um, cloning uh, and re-slicing the data uh, until I have the dashboard that, that I want. Um, and then as a business user, if I have uh, access, I can go into that analyze mode and I can uh, start to customize the dashboards uh, any way I want. I can also add drill downs. So maybe I want to uh, start with a summary chart and then drill down into a more detailed chart. I can uh, apply the drill downs here as well. Um, I can uh, see how the data was uh, created uh, all the way down to the query. Um, uh, so I can kind of get an idea of the lineage of the query, if, uh, if that's important. Um, I can also um, get at the data, again, if I have permission and you're able to export the data as well uh, into uh, CSV or Excel formats. 
Um, um, other things that might be interesting, um, we have the ability to do alerting. Uh, so you can monitor a data set for a condition and then you can trigger an alert and that could be an email alert. That could be a call to a, another system through an API. Uh, or it can be a simple Slack uh, channel alert. And in all of all cases, you can include the data that triggered the alert. Um, we also have uh, machine learning uh, capabilities as well. So I don't know if this is interesting, but uh, you can imagine you, you might want to do some things around forecasting, uh, predictive uh, analytics, maybe even anomaly detection uh, on that same data set so that you, you can uh, apply that all uh, within NOE, add your forecasted value, uh, and then do uh, either dashboards, reports, or learning off of that forecasted value. So you can move from uh, sort of relatively straightforward dashboarding into more advanced uh, analytics all within the NOE platform. So that's a super quick overview um, of how you would build uh, charts uh, off of MySQL um, and uh, start to customize your dashboards. So thanks for the time. Um, hope you find it useful.